Okay guys, uh, we're back with two pieces of content that we'll be going over for today. Uh, first off which would be complete the square, right? We did go over this in class a little bit, right? Complete the square, right? So we're looking at factorization, right? A plus B, right? Uh, square equals A square plus 2AB plus B square, right? Uh, factorization, right? That we were able to go, go through. and. Complete the square is an additional concept, right, that we'll be going over, right, that we would have went over. When you uh, want to make a complete the square, divide it by 2, right, and then uh, square it, and hence you get the answer. We had a question where we would have used the complete the square method, right, uh, a plus b square, right, such, right, that we'll be able to take a look in others. And uh, in class 2, some of you guys have mentioned complete the square and quadratic formula, right? So we look at different formulas, right? Uh, with math, there will be formula as well as with econ. Uh, but how would we derive the formula? The formulas, they uh, came from some kind of uh, method of uh, proving or theorems, right? So sometimes we uh, prove theorems, sometimes we prove formulas. And complete the square can be used as we would have illustrated to uh, prove this, to derive this formula, right? x squared plus bx plus c equals zero, we will put it at constant. Then how would we derive this formula? By completing the square, uh, b uh, over 2a, right? And then square it, x, x squared plus a, right? And then you'll derive this formula that we'll be finding, right? So you could use the complete the square method to be deriving the quadratic formula, right? That we'll be seeing, right? And then uh, the other section, The uh, other thing that we would have covered in class would be also reading poems, right? How do we read poems that we have, right? So uh, there are different types of poems that we saw, right? Vanilla, which is five times three plus four, organization of a, a poem that we'll be taking a look, right? Sonnet, which would be 14 lines, or Shakespearean sonnet. Ode, uh, in terms of song, limerick, more lighthearted, narrative, right? It's poem, lyric poem, right? Metaphysical poetry about life, right? about uh, sort of themes uh, as such, right, about life. Romantic poetry, ballad, couplet, dramatic uh, monologue, right, in terms of like drama that we'll be seeing, right, and elegy, mm -hmm. funerals that we might be seeing. So reading poems, right, also some of you guys had uh, asked questions concerning poems, uh, some of you guys reading poems in school. So who is reading poem in uh, AP Lit, IB Lit, uh, IB Lit, uh, half of which is about poems, right, SAT also has two to three, uh, sort of poems per module, right, that we'll be seeing. So who is talking, to whom is the speaker talking, what's the dramatic context, what ha what's happening, right, the events, right, XYZ event, uh, it's important to break down on uh, what motivates the speaker to speak in the tone. We look at tone, right, the voice of the author, especially more essential in poems where there is a distinct uh, voice or uh, tone that the author might be using. Uh, contribute to its meaning or uh, to sentiments or uh, sort of uh, the uh, pathos or emotions that they might be appealing to. Language of the con uh, poem contribute to its meaning. So uh, in uh, AP Lit, IB Lit, you take a look at the contextuality or the interplay of the language and the meaning itself. And here we take a look at the uh, how does one contribute to the other, language and meaning, and the uh, hypertextual sort of analysis between the two uh, components that are interrelated in a lot of sense, right? And contextual contextualizing that debate, right? That we might be able to see. Uh, organization, right? So once again, stanzas, right? Is that a finale sonnet? What type of uh, sort of format does it have? Uh, what type of rhyme scheme? A, B, A, D, A, C, A, D, right? What kind of rhyme scheme does it have? Rhyme scheme, rhythm, right? Effect, right? The undulation or the motion of the poem, of the language that uh, it undulates or uh, sort of um, interplays that we might be able to see. Uh, and so, uh, also you guys had questions about how to be reading, right, thou with mighty pen, thou, thou, right, with thy call, right, of old English that they might be having, a lot of Shakespearean poems as well, about nature, flowers, of uh, souls of men, right, of men, kind of, right, a sort of uh, contemplation and uh, analysis of this that we might be seeing. Uh, a lot of the famous poets would include Edgar Allan Poe and Millie Dickinson, who else did we cover? Uh, uh, such po poets that we might be seeing, right? Uh, Sima Sini, Pen is Mightier Than Pen, uh, Than Sword, right? Who else? Uh, Daddy Long Legs by Sylvia Plath, Wilbur, uh, uh, who else? 
uh, Robert Frost, uh, where uh, a lot of you guys are reading uh, his poems, Robert Frost. Uh, library was named after. So uh, a lot of uh, sort of famous poets and poems that you'll be covering in class, right, as well as in the SAT, or three to four, about five to six, or right, per test, uh, three to four per module that we'll be seeing in the SAT as well. Right, endowment, uh, flavor, temporary tone, consonant, onomatopoeia, literary accidents, illusion, illusion, uh, paradox, all the different literary devices would apply likewise in the poems, right, that we'll be able to see, right? So once again, uh, we'll come back with more content as you progress through uh, the classes. We'll come back with contents that uh, cater to your uh, sort of uh, uh, needs and uh, interests that we'll be covering in the weeks to come, right? So uh, uh, yeah, stay in tune.